Have you ever wondered how Papa John started? You might be surprised to learn that it all began in a bar room's broom closet, despite the company now having over 5,500 locations worldwide and an estimated revenue of over $2 billion. In this video, we'll reveal the scandalous truth about the history of Papa John's, from its humble beginnings to the shady tactics used to lure customers away from the competition. You won't want to miss the surprising twists and turns that led to one of America's favorite pizza chains. So buckle up and get ready for a wild ride. When he was only 15 years old, the founder, John H. Shatner, started making pizza at a tiny Italian pizzeria called Rocky's Sub Pub in Jefferson, Indiana. John's patience and tenacity eventually allowed him to start making pizza dough and tomato sauce, despite initially only being allowed to wash dishes. After assisting with the pizza baking at Rocky's, John went to college and worked at Greek's, a neighborhood pizzeria where he discovered how to manage high volume orders and increase productivity. John started thinking about his own chain of pizzerias around this time, but he quickly realized he would face tough competitions from companies like Pizza Hut, Domino's, and Little Caesars. In the end, John's plan was to put taste and quality ahead of other considerations, aiming for a mom and pop atmosphere regardless of how big Papa John's got. After that, John spent his free time planning his dream pizzeria's menus, creating floor plans, writing recipes, and selecting the necessary equipment. But he couldn't think of a name for it. He turned to a fellow marketing major in his college dorm to ask them to come up with a name and logo for him. He received a logo that said Papa John's a few days later, which was exactly what he had requested. Unfortunately, he didn't have enough money, so his goals and plans were put on hold for a few more years in a cardboard box in his closet. After that, John returned to Jefferson, where he had trouble finding employment. Robert, John's father, offered him the opportunity to run a tavern he owned in a mixed lounge after he had unsuccessfully applied for numerous jobs. The bar was in disarray, the food and drinks were of poor quality, and the staff's morale was low, and the company owed $64,000. Robert believed the establishment was doomed and hoped John could lessen the harm so he wouldn't go completely bankrupt. Despite the dire situation, John was eager to accept the challenge and put in endless effort for the following seven months to save the bar. John's entrepreneurial spirit took over when he was given free reign to come up with cost-cutting strategies, inventive sales tactics, and events to boost profits. He even disposed of his beloved 1971 Chevrolet Camaro to make the timely repayment of the company's debts. John managed to accomplish the seemingly impossible by the end of February 1984. He successfully converted the mixed lounge into a bar, but John soon understood that he wasn't really content. He loved running his own business, but he hated running a bar. The nightly bar fights, the constant odor of alcohol and smoke, and other factors contributed to the damage. I didn't want to live that life, John vowed, and I didn't want to be complicit in helping others live it either. He had to look for something else, something truly satisfying. As John was closing the mixed lounge one fateful night in March 1984, his eyes happened to catch sight of a broom closet. His realization that his dream of owning his own pizzeria could start there came to him in a flash. He had already earned a sizable profit from serving bar food to visitors at the mixed lounge. Why not serve pizzas in their place? He went home immediately, pulled the cardboard box containing his Papa John's plans out of his closet, and started planning. The following morning, John enthusiastically pitched Robert and the staff at the mixed lounge his plan to leave the bar business and enter the pizza business. Robert decided to join after seeing what his son had accomplished with the mixed lounge, and others soon did as well. They didn't want to waste any time and started knocking down the broom's closet exterior walls that, e that very evening to make room for a pizza oven. 
after juggling broom closet renovations and maintaining mix as usual for a few weeks john and his team finished making final preparations to open their tiny claustrophobic pizzeria in the broom closet turned pizzeria john spent several months honing his pizza making abilities because of mixed profits covering the overhead and expenses to improve his recipes, he asked his staff and the patrons of the bar for their input. However, John encounters a problem when he realized it was challenging to draw customers to a pizzeria located behind a bar. He tried distributing menus, door hangers, coupons, and advertisements, but he couldn't get anywhere. In order to get around this, John resorted to a cunning strategy and dug through Domino's dumpster to retrieve customer receipts. John personally wrote letters to prospective customers using the information he had gathered, offering them a discount on their first order and stating that Papa John's made better pizzas. Sales soared after the success of this dishonest strategy. As news of John's new pizza business spread throughout the community, he encountered a further challenge. After tasting one of Papa John's pizzas, customers rarely went back to the bar. In order to remedy this, John obtained a $40,000 loan in February 1985 to launch the first legitimate Papa John's pizza restaurant next to the bar. The group discovered a boarded up KFC that had been vacant for a while. Before realizing they couldn't afford to hire builders, they designed the restaurant themselves and made scale models out of paper. John and his team had to do all the work themselves while continuing to run Mix and the pizzeria in the broom closet to fund the construction. After being admitted to the hospital in March of 1985, John's father's condition quickly deteriorated. Five days later, Robert Shatner passed away, leaving John devastated. Despite the grief, John was determined to make his father proud and went to Mixed Bar and the site of his unfinished pizzeria. He could have easily drowned in his sorrows at the bar, but instead he picked up a hammer and some nails and went back to work to finish the building of Papa John's. Just 19 days later, after his father's passing, the first proper Papa John's restaurant opened its doors for business. Papa John's business improved significantly after moving from the back of a bar to a proper restaurant. Within a month, they tripled their previous sales record and surpassed their toughest competitor, Domino's. John saw the potential for expansion and decided to open a second location in the nearby town of Clarksville, Indiana. This tactic of building new locations just a little further away from the previous ones became a key strategy for the business's future. John learned from his first restaurant and simplified the menu and interior of the second location to cater to the customer's preferences for carryout or delivery. The business quickly adapted to changing times and focused on bridging a stronger community by building locations outwards from one another. Leading up to the grand opening of the second location, John resorted to his old tricks and scavenged customer addresses from the dumpster of Clarksville Domino's to send handwritten letters. This tactic proved successful as sales at Clarksville's Papa John's continued to grow each week. Capitalizing on the momentum, John swiftly began constructing a third location in the nearby town, which also proved to be a triumph in less than a month. John's aggressive tactics were working, prompting him to open a location in Louisville, Kentucky on December 1st, 1986. Unfortunately, they hit a roadblock as Domino's already had a strong foothold in Louisville, thanks to their partnership with the downtown hotel industry. Despite the disappointment, John did not give up and instead focused on improving the infrastructure of his pizza chain. He entrusted individuals who shared his vision for the future of Papa John's to manage each location and took a hands-off approach, allowing him to concentrate on the company's long-term success. In 1987, the Louisville Papa John's location finally turned a profit and gained a loyal following. With the foundation of the company strengthened, John acquired three locations of a failed pizza chain in the city to convert to Papa John's. He also achieved his dream of turning Papa John's into a franchise, with the first franchisees being former Domino's owners who were convinced by the young chain's successes. However, not everyone agreed with John's vision 
of after Robert's passing, the ownership of Papa John's was split between John Bob F. Ringer and John's Uncle Bill. Despite the company's success, they were not receiving significant profits as John insisted on reinvesting every cent back into the company for further growth. Bill, who was in his 60s at the time, did not understand why they needed to work so hard, especially when he was not benefiting from it. He wanted to reduce the expenses and effort spent on expanding, as he believed Papa John's was already big enough. So there you have it, the scandalous truth about the history of Papa John's. From its humble beginnings in a broom closet to becoming a billion dollar pizza empire, the journey of Papa John's has been nothing short of remarkable. We've learned about the challenges and obstacles faced by John H. Shatner, the founder of Papa John's, and how his tenacity, hard work, and entrepreneurial spirit led to the birth of one of the world's most popular pizza chains. But, as we've also discovered, the history of Papa John's is not without its controversies, including the infamous scandal involving its former CEO, John Shatner. Regardless of, of the scandals, Papa John's has cemented its place in the hearts and stomachs of pizza lovers worldwide. It's clear that the passion for quality pizza that John H. Shatner instilled in the company continues to drive Papa John's success to this day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.